Battle Deck Operation Excalibur by William H. Keith Jr. Prologue Dropship Merlin approaching Glengarry Glengarry System Sky March Federated Commonwealth thirteen forty five hundred hours twenty sixth of April thirty fifty seven Field Marshal Brandall Gareth of the Armed Forces of the Federated Commonwealth had reasons to be pleased. As the world of Glengarry slowly swelled in the dropship Merlin's view screens, vast and mottled in the greens, blues and ochres of a living world, reports continued to flow in from the robot probes, the advanced dropship landings, and the aerospace fighter scouts deployed in advance of the main invasion fleet. He was seated in Merlin's Ops Center, leaning back in an acceleration couch almost completely ringed by screens and redot panels, a high-tech spider at the center of a vast and far-flung web of constantly shifting reports and incoming data. Thus far, all reports from the fleet landing zones on Glengarry remained good. Aerospace fighters were engaged with both air and ground defenses now, but the first dropships had grounded more than two hours ago, and initial reports from the surface suggested that the defenders had been unable to deploy their mech assets in time to effectively counter any of the landings. That, of course, was quite according to plan. Contested dropships' landings were relatively rare in modern battle mech warfare. Planets, after all, were big, generally offering the invader his choice of landing sites. At last report, Glengarry's defenses boasted only a single battle mech regiment, the well-known Great Death Legion, and one of the Legion's free mech battalions had been diverted to the world of Caledonia as the opening move of Operation Excalibur. Gareth's invasion force, a reinforced regiment of three full mech battalions plus a heavy assault mech company, backed up by auxiliary infantry, support units, and an aerospace ground attack wing, ought to be more than sufficient for a quick, clean, and efficient victory over the rebels. Rebels. He smiled at the unspoken word. Brandall Gareth was, above all else, a manipulator, a man who always put himself in control of the situation, in control of the people he worked with. For Gareth, people were assets, resources to be queried, refined, and put to use, whether they were his allies or his opponents. If the Federated Commonwealth had declared Grayson Carlyle and his Grey Death Legion to be rebels, mercenaries in direct violation of their contract, then it was because Gareth had deliberately maneuvered Carlyle into that position, which left Gareth, as usual, in control. A flashing amber light in the corner of one of the smaller view screens announced an incoming priority call flagged for Gareth's attention. He touched the key on the arm of his couch, accepting the communication link. This is Gareth, he said. Go ahead. A man's face appeared on the screen, peering out through the visor of a heavy neurohelmet. The winged V emblem of the 5th Hesperon Aerospace Wing, the Nighthawks, was prominent on the helmet's crest above his eyes. This is Captain Umberto, the man said after a brief hesitation. The Merlin was still a quarter of a light second out from Glengarry, which meant a half-second pause between each statement and its reply. Umberto's teeth flashed in a tight grin. Alpha Squadron of the Fifth. Looks like we got the rebel bastards on the run, Marshal. Give me your taxit, Gareth demanded. Umberto's image blurred and jolted. Part of the cockpit of his aerofighter was visible behind his head and the back of his ejection seat. 
clouds wheeled through a deep, deep blue sky beyond the bit of the transplus canopy Gareth could see on the screen. Sorry, sir, Umberto said, after a longer space than the speed of light time delay required. Picking up some heavy ground to air for a second. There. Okay. We're over the planet's capital. We've got scant traces on what we estimate as one battalion's worth of battle mechs in this immediate area, mostly at the spaceport, and up the hill at the fortress. Fighting at the three primary dropship LZs is light to non-existent. I think we pulled it off, sir. Gareth nodded. It was supremely difficult to achieve anything like surprise in a planetary invasion like this one. This system's Zenith and Nadir jump points were positioned some twenty-eight light minutes from Glengarry's orbit, a five-day flight time for Gareth's incoming dropships that gave the planet's defenders plenty of time to note the approach and prepare their plans. The true tactical surprise in an assault lay in the attacker's choice of dropship landing zones, a choice that might not be made until literally the last few moments before the deorbit burn and atmosphere entry. Still, Glengarry was a Terra-like world, not as big, but with smaller oceans and larger continents, with over 150 million square kilometers of land surface area. There was no way a few hundred battle mechs could cover it all. How about the locals' aerospace strength? There's not much in the air yet, Umberto replied. I've lost one in my squadron so far. Glasky got nailed by PPC fire from that damned fortress. If they've got space fighters down there, they're keeping them hidden in shielded bunkers or revetments. Any sign of their dropships? That's negative, sir. There are indications of a pretty extensive underground complex at the spaceport, and there could be some stored up at the fortress. The image jolted and blurred again. Whoa! Umberto grunted. Wait one. Distantly, Gareth could hear the crackle of radio voices. Calls between the members of Umberto's squadron. Watch it, Alpha Leader, one voice cried. Watch it, there's heavy fire coming from that secondary tower. I'm hit, another voice called. I'm hit and going down. Punch out, Alpha Five, punch out. The sky visible behind Umberto's head spun crazily for a moment, then steadied. Make that two down, the squadron leader said. An aerospace squadron was the equivalent of a mech company, numbering six airspace fighters. Umberto's unit had lost a third of its strength already. Sir, the ground defenses are wicked, mostly centered in and around the fortress. If they've got mobile assets down there, dropships or fighters, we haven't seen them yet. It's... Possible, sir, that the enemy has some of their mech forces and dropships redeployed elsewhere in system, and they're laying low. Copy that, squadron leader, Gareth said, thoughtful. If the advanced strike force scanners had picked up only a battalion or so of Legion mechs in the immediate area around Glengarry, that left another battalion as many as thirty-six battle mechs unaccounted for. Keep looking, especially for those missing mechs. We don't want any surprises after we're fully deployed. Roger that, Umberto said. Report to me directly as soon as you have solid intel. Gareth out. As Umberto's image flicked off, Gareth thought again about how big a world was, and knew that those tens of millions of square kilometers of terrain, of forest and mountain, of ice cap and marsh, 
of prairie and tundra and city, and even ocean, would help the enemy at least as much as it had already helped him. If the sheer size of the planet allowed him to pick and choose undefended landing sites for his dropships, it also gave the enemy plenty of room to hide. No doubt the defenders of Glengarry were deliberately keeping the major portion of their forces under cover, until they knew just how strong the invaders were. No problem. Gareth's forces would crush those defensive units they could find, then hunt down the rest company by company, even mech by mech if need be. The only real deadline was to complete the work before the rest of the Grey Death Legion returned from Caledonia. That portion of the plan, Gareth reflected, with just a shadow of a frown, hadn't gone nearly as well. The news from Caledonia, relayed to the fleet by HPG a few days before, was not at all good. Not that the outcome posed any real problem to the larger plan. The Caledonian operation had been less certain to begin with, and, given the opposition, more difficult to carry off with complete success. By all accounts, the battle outside the small Caledonian village of Falkirk had been a disaster for Gareth's task force, under the command of the late marshal Felix Zellner. But then, Zellner's orders had been to engage the 3rd Battalion of the Grey Death Legion, to destroy it if possible, yes. But more than that, to keep it tied down while Gareth's real blow fell here, on Glengarry. Partly, of course, the diversion on Caledonia made Gareth's operation on Glengarry easier, with only two mech battalions to face instead of three. The real significance of the battle between the Legion and Zellner's Third Davian Guards was that it gave Gareth's assault on Glengarry the legitimacy it needed in the name of the Federated Commonwealth. Of course, the Fedcom government had no idea what was really at stake here, and would not until it was too late. That thought, the certainty of the ultimate success of the Operation Excalibur, was part of Gareth's feeling of almost exuberant well-being. So far, each piece of the plan had fallen into place with masterful precision. The situation with the rebel Jacobites on Caledonia had been engineered specifically to force the Great Death Legion into a violation of its mercenary contract. Marshal Zellner and the Third Davian Guards had been sent in to support Caledonia's legitimate government and to provoke a fight with the Legion, a fight that would brand Carlyle's mercenaries as contract breakers. That provocation, it seemed, had worked only too well. According to the information he'd received so far, Carlyle had pulled off another of his tactical miracles, splitting his battalion in the face of a much stronger force and striking hard and unexpectedly from an unguarded flank. The attack, reportedly, had rolled Zellner's right flank into his center and left, creating a vast, struggling mass of battle mechs that were easy targets for his attackers, while the mechs themselves were unable to maneuver or fire. The third guards had been virtually wrecked at Falkirk, and Zellner was dead, his mighty atlas pounded to scrap. If only Zellner could have kept the fight going just a little longer. Gareth sighed. He was a realist, and content to deal with situations as they were, not as they should be. It would take time for the Legion's 3rd Battalion to make the passage from Caledonia to Glengarry, a minimum of three hyperspace jumps. While the jumps themselves were virtually instantaneous, it took anywhere from four to ten days after each jump to recharge a jump ship's drive coils, depending on the energy flux from the local sun. Add to that, the five days it would take the Legion dropships to travel from Caledonia to the star system's jump point, and five days more for the trip from Glengarry's jump point to Glengarry, 
and the whole passage would take three weeks or more, plenty of time for Gareth's forces to complete their mission here. The 3rd Battalion would arrive at Glengarry sometime in mid-May, only to find its landhold firmly in Gareth's grasp. Carlyle and his rebels would have no option but to surrender. It was a pity, really. Carlyle had an exceptional mind, his unit a record unparalleled in the military histories of the inner sphere. The man was a tactical genius, with a list of military victories as long as a battle max arm. If only there was some way to get him to join Operation Excalibur. Gareth swiveled his couch to look at another of the display screens, ringing his workstation. An unpiloted remote scanner was providing him with a direct visual feed from the planet, an aerial view of the city of Dunkeld. Above the city, on a low and rocky cliff, squatted the object of the invasion. The huge and dull black sprawl of a Star League era fortress, the headquarters and operation center for the Great Death Legion. Soon, that will be my headquarters, Brandall Gareth thought, with a heady rush of anticipation. And then, Excalibur can properly begin. <laughs>